Oh, what's up everyone? My name is Nigark. Welcome to a new series. We are going to be playing Villagers. It's my first time launching up the game, so I have no idea how this is going to go. We're going to hit campaign. And chapter one, a new beginning. Boom. Dead end the river around. Don't forget to build a rain catcher or well. This is the story of Nigark, a young man who managed to shine a ray of hope into a pitch black tunnel of despair at a time when the war and illness ruled a world filled with darkness. Uh, hey, rasty winds blew him, oh, blew around him. Strong winds of pungent ad adverse adversities, Jesus, trying to extinguish the light. Even when Nagar couldn't see much in the darkness, was almost blind, he always laid his hand successfully around the flame. I don't know why the writing style is so weird. Sometimes so close that he was in danger of burning as he was but a child. He, hmm. What's wrong, Jacqueline? Why don't you continue? It is a shame to admit being the writer I am, but I am lost for words. Really? We cannot accept this. Let's do something about it. Host, bring down, bring us down a bottle of your best wine. Ursel, are you trying to soften me with this devilish alcohol? We agreed to celebrate today. Let's treat ourselves to something special. Delicious, where was I? The sickness of Nagurk. Let me start a long time ago, back in our hero's childhood. He had a little brother with whom he lived in the countryside. Nagark was a little as uh, was as little as two stacked boots. That's I guess that's me. He had a little brother with him who lived in a tiny settlement far away in a rural area. And his parent wait, his parents took care of them well, providing them with prey from the woods. They paid great attention to making their children learn to survive the cruel wilderness. One day they went out hunting with their father, however the children couldn't concentrate and began to argue which led to a terrible accident. Their father, annoyed by his children squabbling and feeling the pressure from having to provide a meal for his family, accidentally stepped into his own trap, dying a terrible death. Oh. The gark, filled with fear and terror, fled the scene and ran into the forest, while his brother returned to the settlement. Neither of them have been able to... have been... Neither of them have seen each other since that fateful day, and Nagark even forgot his name. Oh, that wasn't Rasty Winds, it was Nasty Winds. It's all very sad. That may be, but it all turned out well for Nagark in the end. The runaway child was found and taken in by farmers a few days later in a place far away from his home and spent his remaining childhood there. Nagark was plagued by a guilty conscience, which he tried to atone for through hard work. He was convinced that he could only undo his sins by doing good deeds. Nagark was self-educated from very early on and taught himself a great many skills. Every time he paid visit to a big city, he used every chance he got to talk to the, its inhabitants and gain more knowledge. The farmers recognized his potential and put him in charge of managing the farmyard as soon as he was old enough. I think we should talk a little about the war. Oh yes, the war. So many faded memories that we literally had to bury. Um... Okay. One day it simply broke out. Without warning and without any prior political negotiations, an enemy whom they uh, whom they soon came to call the Faceless, invaders from the northeast all wearing the same bizarre metal masks and coming from countries that previously only our boldest explorers had ever seen. Without thinking much about his strategy, our king sent his troops out to blindly attack the enemy. The losses were devastating and we seemed to be no match for the enemy. Every available man was called up to fight as a soldier. Every boy that was able to hold a weapon was sent to the front lines. The king ejected, uh, the king rejected all dissenting voices regarding this harsh decision of his. Word quickly spread about his plan and many families fled. Not only did they want to put as much distance as they could between themselves and the war, they also did not want to lose their men to the fires of battle. Luckily, there were a few dukes that were opposed to the king's decision who decided to protect the people as best they could. And that brings us to Albrechtus. Oh yes, Duke Albrechtus. Not exactly the most trustworthy person in the world. Initially, he was unwilling to lay his cards on the table, but when he turned up at Nagark's farmyard one day, he did not he did not hesitate to assert his authority. The devious, sleazy, and condescending man claimed that he had been sent on behalf of the king to gather up all available men in the area. He made a big display of authority, entering people's houses and having them search, and that's when he came across Nagark's sketches. Oh yes, the famous sketches. Nagark had to save lots of money to be able to afford parchment and charcoal but he had spent a day and night designing complex cities. Running the farm had inspired him to do great things, and his ideas were not absurd, as one might have thought. After conduct conducting extensive discussions with architects and planners, living in the big city, Nagark designed technically feasible settlements, villages, and yes, even entire cities. 
Agark was talented, and although the king's orders were clear, this gave Albrecht a pause. He had a suggestion for him. He said, You may be surprised to find I have heard of you before, Agark. A uh, young man with an extraordinary talent for city planning, although he has never learned from a master. Don't ask me how I know about you, but please, I'd like you to consider the following deal. Take all the people from this farm and your direct neighbors into a in the area with you and build a self-sufficient settlement within a year. I don't care how or where you do it. If you manage to do it, I will recommend you to the king as a city planner. After all, when the war is over, we will need people like you to help rebuild the country, provided we win, of course. And in keeping with my generosity, I will ensure that your men are excluded from being called up. However, if you fail, I will immediately revoke all protection. And the Gark felt numb. Suddenly, all eyes were on him and the lives of many people were depending on his reply. He was unable to utter a word, but gave the duke his hand, who took it gladly with a gleeful grin on his face. The deal was sealed. Wow. These are dark times, which is why you should view this opportunity as a particularly precious one. I envy you for it. Bow, uh... Now? Now I wish sometimes that I could be a simple laborer and make a home for myself. Oh, how? Uh, okay. Rather than having to help rule with the leaders of the world. Uh, he departed and Nagark found himself in the most peculiar situation. Suddenly he had a responsibility that he had neither asked for nor was he ready to bear. Uh, fate was obviously putting him to the test once more despite him already having suffered so much in childhood. He is demanding that this virginal land in front of me becomes a settlement, but where on earth should I start? Uh, may as well have asked me to get a couple of porcupines to mate. Alright, concentrate. We need a central place for the planning for planning the city, a roof over our heads from where I can allocate jobs to people. Something new is available. My god, that intro was horribly long. Place your town hall near the big river. Your villagers near, need a nearby water source. Okay. Boom. These are my people. They're doing things. That's moving. That's for me, by the way. Can I hit three? Fast forward? Fast forward? How fast? Up to ten times. Yeah, there we go. That would have taken a long time. Oh, there's this little bar. Nice. Cool. That was a hell of an intro. The town hall is your main building. Until you build homes, villagers will sleep in in front of it? Uh, okay. My dear friend, a workman like me can only help you if you give me a job. My friends, I hate the giant letter thing. That's uh, so... Ugh. And I will be in the town hall awaiting your orders. Uh, wait. We've known each other since we were children. I'm so pleased to have a familiar face on my side. Ah, come on. There's no need to get sentimental. Just... Tell me what we're supposed to do with the resources. Don't forget, we laborers are the only ones who will carry them to the building site for you, and we will build whatever you like. My head is already spinning, and I've barely done anything yet. If only I had something to write all this information down on. I should be in the forest, ramming my sharp blades into wild animals, and carrying them home for supper instead. Albrechtus has sent me to the simpleton who probably can't even spell the word city planner. The duke sent you? You look like a hunter, not a city planner. Well, yes, I am a hunter. Watching a child playing at being an architect isn't exactly a fulfilling alternative to the thrill of the hunt, and as for taking notes, a robust, note a robust notebook with a leather case. Is that for me? How generous. From then on, Nagark wrote everything in his notebook, an excellent method which I can't recommend enough. Don't fucking explain why everything is happening in the game. Like, I don't care. Just let me have a city builder. Holy shit. I've got to hand it to you, Nagark. You're a master at casting your followers back into the bleak and barbaric times of the Dark Ages. You've even managed to outdo the bandit baron Icarius. Icarius? You mean the terrible Icarius? Be patient, my love. We'll get to that spawn of Satan later on in our story. What are you talking about, Ewalt? Has the fresh air got into your head? It most certainly has, and that's how everyone else who has been forced to sleep outside feels too. We need somewhere to live, we need homes, you should start building houses immediately. We need wood to do that, and I'm sure we can help ourselves to the wood from the forest. As long as wild animals don't help themselves to us, oh dear. Without a doubt, Nagark had to spend lots of time managing resources. However, using the gathering symbols, he could keep an eye on everything. That word, ah, buggery, I'll save my breath. For example, Nagark had to tell his people that they had to get resources like wood. Indeed, using the gathering symbols, it was easy for him to give orders. Laborers then immediately commenced their new tasks. Gather wood. 
Gather wood. Oh, I can change the size of it. Just gather a ton of wood. Yeah. What's this? Fall trees. 20 trees. 20 trees. That's what we need. That's, that's what we need. I'm trying to figure out what the hotkey is for these, but I don't know if there is one. We have 60 food. You're felling trees. I like it. Oh. Continue. We've got one out of a lot. So let's do this. We're going to put it on ten, ten times because this is going to take forever if I don't. 14, 15, 16. Let's hit. Oh! There. Times one. You gark this wood from the forest is strong and resilient. I like your enthusiasm. But let's find a place for it. We've got plenty of solid ground and lands where we can build houses for everyone. But let's make one thing clear. I don't want to live too close to the edge of the forest. Thick woodland always gives me the feeling like I'm being watched by something evil. Houses. Enough for one family. One. How many do I have to build? Three. General. Houses. Oh. Well, it didn't give me enough to build three houses. Twenty wood is for one house. <laughs> Just ten times. You know, I'm probably going to keep it at at least three times. Like, always. Because one time is just dirt slow. It doesn't matter whether you're big or small, strong or weak, as smart as a whip, or as dumb as a box of rocks. At the end of the day, everyone is conquered by this one simple thing. A piece of wisdom from a foolish bard? Please enlighten us. The answer is hunger, and when your stomach is rebelling, there's no way of thinking straight. My stomach? I should have brought food with me. My somewhat modest hunting skills have withered and died, seeing as I haven't used them over the past few years. Finally, something for me to do. Neither... You nor your laborers can carry out work on empty stomachs. I'll show you how to pull big fish out of the lake. You weren't sent by the duke. You were, you've were. you been sent from heaven. Before we get to that, though, you need a jetty. I need a jetty, guys. Um, Let's see. Jetty. Gather wood for jetty. I need 30 wood for jetty. Okay. Gathering. Gather wood. Production. Public. General. Does it only show stuff when I have resources for it? Finally, we've got somewhere to live now if you'll excuse me. My wife and I have a family to start. Well, you sure are in a hurry, my friend. While the stars in my private life are aligned at the moment, a man's got to seize his opportunities where he can and know when he can produce his most fertile juices, right? Ah, oh, goodness. That was a little bit too much information. What do you mean? Sure you, sure you haven't got any more baby-making secrets to tell me, Jacqueline? Well, now, I'll save that delicate topic for the colder seasons over of the year. Let's just say storks deliver babies. Okay. But seriously, I don't see a jetty here. There's... Maybe I have to have the wood to get the jetty. Do 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 do. <laughs> so yeah, there's a family in here now. They have one food stored, no water stored. Marcel, or Marcel and Alexandra. Oh. I know what they're doing in there, the filthy nasties. Fornicating. Alright, let's gather up some more wood. Uh, oh hey, there's a person on a boat. That looks exactly like Banished. That is 100% Banished. We have enough wood to build a jetty. You should... You just need to tell us where it should go. Well, that's easy. The jetty needs to be built by the water. Please don't forget to allocate the job of fishermen in the town hall. Jetty. Town hall. Um, one. This is literally banished. Oh, I can't assign a fisher even though I... Okay, so I have to have the building first for it to allow me to build a fisher. Hold on. Uh, options. Hotkeys, none. Keys. Fast forward. Please. Please. Increase speed. Keypad plus and minus. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. The only scary thing is it's right next to the key that I use for recording. I use the numpad um, multiplication sign to start my recordings and end them. So if I accidentally hit that, recording is just done. It just stops. 
I saw a raindrop on my screen, and that's another thing that I really hate. I really hate when they do the screen raindrop thing. Oh my god. But I love city building games, so... A spe Banished is a very, very good city building game, so if this is trying to be Banished, I might like it. Incredibly large, immensely powerful, and inconceivably magnificent. Are you talking about your ego? What, God Swallop? I'm describing the fish that I'm going to pull out of the water when the new jetty is built. Send me two villagers from the town hall and we'll catch a feast to remember. To Nagark's relief, the people were independent enough that once allocated, they continued carrying out their jobs until he reallocated them. Something one can't always say about you, Jacqueline. Excuse me? Oh, nothing. Okay. So the campaign is probably just a glorified tutorial, I think. That's what it seems like, at least. So we need um, one more house. Boop. And can I rotate these things? I'll try it out next time. I was trying Q and E earlier, but that wasn't the rotating buttons. Keep getting that wood. Keep gathering that wood. I notice there's no stockpile zoning. Got eight wood. Yeah, you guys have got to keep going. What is this? What is this button? What is that? What does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, Ma Marcel and Alexandra went. Okay. I'm sure. Is there any greater pleasure in life for ma for a man than building his own house? We're on the second house already. We're making progress, Nagark. Yeah, I know. I'm literally telling you to do that. Um, produced today two, average one of stored eight. Aha! That's a nice drop down. I like that. I don't like that the hover goes like that. I can tell what these things are with a much smaller hover than that. Oh, I I have the things. Okay, let's house. Come on, house, house. Okay, right click is not rotating. Maybe if I place it in like drag? Nope. I don't know how to rotate. I'm sure I could look in the hotkeys. I'm not going to. I'm going to. I have to know. Is there is there a rotate button? Please. Period and comma, okay. Alright. I guess that's fair. We'll hit the plus sign about nine, nine, ten times. People should still be out gathering wood, too. Oh, it has little, has little things. That's cute. Kind of like that. What do you got going on here? You got, like, a little... Why would you build that little fraction of a fence? Like, this serves no purpose. These little, these little itty bitty things? Oh my god. Under construction. Come on. You're almost there. You're like, you need one more wood. Cool, did it. Nailed it. A small house, but lots of peace and quiet. I think we've built enough houses for the moment. We should have a rest. We have a town hall, a jetty, some food, and a roof over our heads. Well, that's certainly a start. To be honest, it's more than I expected. A young man organizing a whole village, well, we live in an age where I would never have thought it was possible, and it's certainly not something you see every day. It's time to set your preconceptions aside, my good man, blah blah blah. I know how to use my head just like every other person. You know what, Ursul? Nagark has failed miserably. What are you talking about? I don't feel like continuing my story. I need something to wet my whistle. Quick, bring the man a flagon of ale. A grumpy rider needs a drink to be able to tell a decent story, and of course, Nagark did it. The foundations of a new village had been laid. I've got to say I like this man. Oh yes, I've got a soft spot for him. Oh, not in the way that you think, though. Um, every day should start with a happy song. Well, that's a piece of wisdom. Even Nagark sang this morning. Okay, so we introduced Benlin. So it's true, I presume the Albrechtus... Uh, had been having a laugh, but the fool really did give an inexperienced youngster the job of planning the city. Uh, why are you here, basically? In the honor of the right word, uh, blah 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 blah. It came to see my doomed settlement. What a complete and utter waste. Okay, he's being a dick. Excuse me, but do you, 
why do we owe the what do we do, owe the pleasure of your company? Uh, Albrecht just sent me to report back on you regularly. Our enemies have seized more land in the northeast. New men are being called up for our army every day. <coughs> uh, there's a war going on. It's so peaceful here. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. A circus comes to town. Are they circus performers? Indeed they are. They're traveling the country, heading southwest. All cowards flee from the war like rats from a sinking ship. Uh, blah, blah, blah. However, the artist smiles. We're hiding in inner pain. They spoke in whispers of the mysterious blah, illness. The faceless describing them as such still seems rather bizarre. Apparently, the faceless are immune to the illness. Um, I don't... I just want to build a city, guys. It's, there's a plague spreading inland. Say no more, Ewald. It makes me feel quite uneasy, too. I built a bridge. This would mean, in case of an emergency, you could leave. Head over the water and further southwest. I'd never consider leaving. Fate might protect you and spare you from the plague, but if it reaches our village, are you sure you'd want to put our lives at risk? You described the circus performers as cowards earlier, and now you're suggesting I make escape plans? Benlin's right. I'd follow your advice. Excuse me, I don't follow. Sorry, sometimes ideas just burst from my mouth. We need rocks. We need rocks. That's what they're saying right there. That entire thing was them saying we need rocks for a bridge and there's a circus and there's a plague and you should build a bridge in case the plague gets to us. That's exactly what they said. But I have to wrap it up right there. My name is Nagark. This is Villagers. As always with a new series, if you like it, let me know in the comments. If you don't like it, also let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching.